Hello everyone. Today I would like to talk about the PCA9685 16 channel 12 bit PWM servo motor driver, which is this one here. So this driver helps us in projects where we need to use a number of servo motors, or very many servo motors with the microcontroller. For example, if you're using Arduino, you uh, we find that it has a limited number of input and output pins. So if you need to use very many servo motors, then you may need a driver like this one to be able to achieve whatever you want. So for projects like hexapods, for example, quadcopter drones, robotic arms, and other projects where you may need to use very many servo motors, this driver is recommended. Let me have a closer look at the driver. So as you can see, uh, this driver has pins on this side and that side. So one side you connect your microcontroller, for example, in this case I'm going to be connecting my Arduino on this side. And then the other side is for connecting another driver or there's chaining. I'll be talking about that later. There are six pins. The first pin here is the ground pin. The next one is the output enable. So this output enable is low by default. But if you turn it high, then you are going to disable the pins. The next pin is the clock pin and the data pin. So these two pins are used for I to see communication. Then next is a VCC and lastly is the another power supply, external supply for the servo motors. But normally it is advisable to supply the motor, the servo motors from this other external power supply terminal here. Then here, this is where we connect our servo motors. So this board can take 16 servo motors. So they'll be connected here. This is the signal pin or the PWM, then the power and then the ground. So because normally the servo motors come when they are connection wires already have these colors specified so it's easy to connect here. So another important aspect to look at are these pads here, these soldable pads. So these are the I2C address selection pads here. So by default they come when they are not soldered or they are just open. And in that case when they are not soldered then this driver has an I2C address of 0 times 40. So in case you are going to be using more than one driver then you need to give each driver a separate I2C address so that you can easily deschain these drivers. These solderable pads can be soldered to give I2C addresses from 0 times 40 four to 0 times 7F. I'll put a simple diagram here to give you some examples of how the addresses appear when you solder the various pads here, these solderable pads here. This is very important because it enables us to daisy chain up to 62 of these driver modules on a single I2C bus. They are enabling us to control 992 servo motors. Now let me show you how this is connected to Arduino and also how we put the servo motors here. This is the setup I'm going to be using with our Arduino. So I'll be connecting the PCA9685 servo motor driver. To Arduino like this. In this case I'm going to be using four motors for demonstration but like I said this can take a maximum of 16 servo motors and you can even daisy chain more drivers up to 62 drivers taking 992 servo motors. All of them working using a single I2C bus for Arduino. So for the connection you just simply put the ground, the first ground pin, you connect to the ground Arduino ground then the output enable you leave it floating because it's already enabled low. Then the I2C clock and data pins are connected to the corresponding I2C pins for Arduino. Since I'm using Arduino Uno, the I2C clock is A5 and I2C data pin is A4. So I'll be connecting them like that. Then the VCC, we got the 5 volts of Arduino. Then this other last pin, which is the power supply for the servo motors, I'm not going to be using it because I'm going to be using this external power supply, 5 volts external power supply here. So this one I just leave it. Then for the servo motors, you can connect them to any of the output pins here. The connection of the servo motors is simple because remember the servo motors wire is coming in there already. Where is it to identify because this yellow is going to the PWM pin here or the signal pin. Then the red is the VCC or the power line and then this brown goes to the ground. So I'll be connecting it like that. So in this case I've connected one, so let me connect all of them here. So I've now connected all the four motors on these first four output pins, marked from 0 to 3. So they are labeled from 0 to 15. Let me have a look at the kind of code that I'm going to be using to be able to run these motors. Okay, let's now look at the kind of code that we are going to be using. 
in this case i'm going to be using the adapt fruit bmw servo driver.h library this contains most of the useful functions that are going to be used for controlling the servo motors then we have the defined servo min and servo max so these values here define the pulse length when the motor is at position zero or zero degrees and then the max defines the pulse length when the motor is at 180 degrees all gives you the count because we are using a 12-bit count so it is from zero to 4096 these values de depend on the kind of motor that you are using um, normally if you are going to check in the examples here which are given and the servo test so most cases what you are going to find is that here you find they have given you servo min as 180 and servo max as 600 but these values change depending on the kind of motor that you are using so sometimes in most cases it's good to first do some kind of calibration to know which what exactly is the value for the minimum pulse length and what is the maximum what is the value of the maximum pulse length for your motor for example in my case I'm using 125 as the minimum and 575 as maximum. So uh, a simple trick you can use, you can use this kind of code here. For example, here I'll just use this P. In method is for initializing the driver. Then here we set the PWM frequency, which is 60. And then here we set the set PWM is a very important method here or function. So this targets the motor at a specific position for example if i want to control on one motor remember i've connected four motors but if i want to control only one motor out of the four i can use this function then i call the motor at position zero or the first motor and then i give it pulse this is the pulse width at zero degrees and this is the pulse width at 180 degrees so i'll leave it below 500 then we see how the motors move so as you can see, that motor now sweeps from 0 to 180 continuously like that. But all the other motors are not moving. And also this kind of code can be used to calibrate the motor. For example, you can simply, you can comment out this value for the maximum value and then use this one, this value here. So if you use this value and uh, you keep on changing the value, you keep on changing this, keep on changing this value of pulse width. We discover there is a position where I reach and the motor no longer moves further that's the minimum pass with it or sometimes even you move, if you move beyond that point the motor will begin making some kind of noise or the gears of the motor begin making noise meaning that you have exceeded the minimum pass with it so you need to set it to a, in a position which is suitable for your motor the same happens for this other one here okay let me give you another example using this same trick here so in another example code I'm going to use is this one here. So in this case, I'm going to be controlling the servo motor on position zero and position three. And they are going to be moving these respective pulse lengths from 125 then to 50, then they go up to 775. So let me upload it again and then we see how the motors are moving. And as you can see, it's only the motors on position zero and three moving. The other motors are not moving. So this is how the set WM method is very important in controlling the movement of the various motors at different positions of the motor driver. So the last example I'm going to give is for controlling the four servo motors that are connected with my driver. So I'll put here the number of servo motors as four, which have been connected from the position zero to three. Then I use this for loop. In the loop section, I'll just use the for, for loop, which is going to be controlling the number of steps that the motor is going to be taking using this pulse length parameter. So it's going to be moving from the servo mean to servo max. Okay, and then it will be performing a sweeping movement. So it will be moving forward from 0 to 180. Then when it reaches 180, then it goes back to 0. And this movement is going to be done by all the motors that have been connected with the four motors. So let me upload this code and then see how this works. I have now uploaded the code on my Arduino. So let me put on the external power supply and we see how our motors are going to be moving. The code I've written is 
controlling the motors one by one sweeping from 0 to 180 and back so the first motor moves from 0 to 180 and back the second one moves the third and the fourth motor so that is the simple connection of our several motors to Arduino and as you can see I've only used four motors but you can have a maximum of 16 motors for one driver mode in the link in the description I have explained more of how to use more drivers and how to make the connection so you can visit it and see how this works out so hope you have learned something new today don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to watch my other videos and tutorials and also to like my videos thanks for watching